In an ever-changing world, Life Changes Network presents a voice of truth and inspiration. This is Life Changes with Filippo, with the unforgettable, ever-insightful conversations that captivate our fascination and insatiability for the inspiring moments of real-life journeys. As we as one strive for higher planes of existence and a better understanding of our true selves and the world in which we live, always remembering, Life Changes. This is radio like you've never felt before with tonight's guest, transformational pioneer and founder of Paracom, Jim Selman, and now your host, our MC, the Master of Change, Filippo Voltaggio. Ciao, everyone. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I'm listening to Mark's introduction here, uh, Higher Planes of Existence and all of that, and I'm thinking to myself, God, I'm so glad we're on radio right now, and not just, and not yet TV, because we've been working so hard on this new clock and the new format and the new commercials and stuff, I didn't get a chance to shower, my hair is all in a mess. And... That's why I'm sitting over here. <laughs> and I, I, I know we can't do that when we have a camera pointed at us, which I'm sure we will soon at the rate we're going. So, yeah, this is an exciting day that uh, we have the opportunity to test out our new uh, mainstream format as we're starting to stream a little bit differently in terms of the way that the show will flow. So those of you that have been with us every week for the last 171 weeks, thank you. And uh, we look forward to you joining us this week and, and every week for a, a, a more uh, – interactive show and uh, lots of exciting guests. Yeah, and actually, uh, interactive is a really good word because, A, we want to know, as always, what you're thinking, but we've never really pushed that because we've, we've gotten emails and, and, you know, we've gotten people making suggestions. and and uh, But now with this new format, I'm sure it's going to be like, you know, like, whoa, because it's going to be very different. Yeah, this is definitely uh, going to be different, well, especially... The uh, you know you've done so many shows with a with a, a longer and deeper uh, uh, interview segment, and although the next couple of shows we're going to still be doing a uh, a longer interview format, we're eventually going to start toying with things we've always talked about, like more interactivity. We're going to start looking at, at call ins and interactive uh, interactivity with the listeners, as well as uh, you know doing you know testing out different segments with uh, with dif- different subject matter, starting to get. Uh, uh, listener feedback and and other cool things yeah i hope i'm not gonna have to say things like uh yeah 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 that's nice okay so moving right along you know i don't want to interrupt the guests i, I love you to me all the time. No, well but you're not a guest <laughs> see that yeah, yeah that's yeah. nice so um uh but but no because i like to listen i like to hear i like i like to tell stories i like to hear stories well, that's true, and you like to hear yourself tell stories. No, no isn't that no, how the show started in no, the first actually, place? No, actually, that's not true because I always ask somebody, "Have you heard this story before?" Because I don't need to tell it again. And then people, especially on stage, they ask me, uh, "Have you, have you know, are you going to tell this story?" And I say, "No, I've already told it." We're going to tell more stories right after this commercial break. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb and rob minerals from the body. Ionways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from an Ionways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. An ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. Hi, I'm Ken Sheets with BuzzBros.com, socially conscious social media. Really happy to be here on Life Changes with Filippo talking to you. Filippo was one of our first clients, and we built his YouTube station, his Twitter Twitter stuff. We do all kinds of good stuff. But YouTube is really where we shine. We've got over 6 million views for our clients there. Anyway, give us a look up at uh, BuzzBros.com. That's B-U-Z-Z-B-R-O-Z.com. Thanks. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. 
We're back. Uh, you know, in this part of the segment, uh, we've talked about reading uh, the mail that we get uh, from our many, many listeners actually throughout the world already. And we certainly get a lot of it. And w the idea is that it's going to be topical. It's going to be what the mail that came in this week and, and that kind of thing. And, and, and we'll do that. And, and especially since now we're going to be asking for mail. All, all of the mail that we've gotten so far has pretty much been completely unsolicited. And let me tell you, it's been appreciated uh, more than you know because... Some of the testimonials that have come through have been really, really heart touching and heart wrenching and 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 in, in, in very very special. So uh, I figured since this is the first time we're doing it, I uh, what I'm looking at is uh, is email that we've gotten uh, that I've started to save. I haven't saved all of them because I didn't think to save them until people started saying, "Wow, you should save that." As I started sharing. I remember one in particular. I was actually back in the days when I used to get sick. I don't get sick anymore. But I was lying on the couch all covered up with a fever. And uh, we had just started the show. And I, um, not, we had done it for a few months. So we had several episodes going. And I, I, I was having this moment of like, what am I doing? What is this? Why, why life changes and, and all of that? And this email came through as if like, you know, like it was planned or something. And I wish I had it to, to read and I, I couldn't find it. So I must have deleted it soon after, not thinking I needed to keep it. But it should have been one I kept for the records also for myself. Because what it said was, uh, Filippo, I've been in the hospital uh, since, uh, for three months, uh, almost since exactly your show started. And I've looked forward to it every Monday night. And it has brought a smile back to my face. It has given me hope again. I was depressed, et cetera, et cetera. And by this point now, I was bawling uh, as I was being woe is me about myself and then reading somebody who was getting so much out of what we were doing. I, 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 there, there, there really are no words. I, I, I just wish I had it to read you. So, so, so there's that. There, there are some funny, some funny emails uh, we've gotten. Um, and some very thoughtful, like, I mean, even Rosemary Nadu wrote, I love Filippo, great interviews. And, and that, let me tell you, that can make my day, uh, especially when we're trying to figure out what we're doing here sometimes and, and all that. Uh, Bernie Seal, Searlson wrote, it's inspiring to know people like you, you are out there making the difference. Now he put out there in quotes. So I'm not sure if he means like I'm out there or I'm out. I don't know. I'm out somewhere. So that, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, let me see. Uh, what else is, is kind of fun. Uh, this is kind of funny actually. Uh, um, here, uh, Bob Junkins said, Filippo is the Ryan Seacrest of spirituality. I don't know how quite to take that, but, um, I'll, I'll take it. That's out there. That's out. That's out there. That's pretty out there. Uh, our guests, of course, have written us really great emails as well. Um, let's, uh, but let's see here. This isn't a guest. It was truly life changing, Filippo. You are amazing. I see your light. Lots of love and thanks, Vibhuti Ananda. You are outstanding, Filippo. Mary Yi. In Hong Kong, you know, actually, as I'm reading this, I kind of feel like I don't want to be like glorifying. I mean, I, I don't know. Let's see. Did anybody say anything that's other, other than how wonderful? Well, I'll, I'll chime in and, and validate. You know, I think it's great that you're reading those and, and saying that. Because we haven't done this. We haven't shared the, the, the feedback that we've gotten, which has been so strong. And doing a show like this where you're pioneering, which, is, which actually kind of translates to our guest who has certainly broken new ground across, you know, his businesses and, 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 and the, the culture that he has uh, paved the way for. Uh, you know, to do that. Sometimes you know, you, we have our days where we're like, what are we doing? You know, this isn't the easiest path when you take a, a, a different path, you know, than, than the norm. And so to have this kind of feedback, you know, has been like guideposts on the road to keep us going. Yeah. And, you know, as I'm saying this, some of these are pretty personal. I, I, maybe I shouldn't be reading last names. So I should, like Kevin, um, uh, 
who might even appreciate if I mention his last name, but I mean, I, I don't know. We, we'll, I'll have to learn this aspect of it too. But he says, you are teaching me to notice what's right with things more often. Thanks so much for your show archive. It is really something special and helping me get through some very difficult times. Now, see, that chokes me up. Yeah, it's exactly uh, like I say. It's those types of things that... Uh that make the questioning worthwhile. You know, we put a lot of time into this over the years, and it took us time to find our voice. And when we started this show and started this journey, it was about sharing the journey, sharing our discussions, sharing our, you know, the discussion that we have every day, uh, you know, the emails that we share. You were saying this earlier, that we share, then, you know, to be able to share that with others. And so that's exciting now to, to start stepping into this new format and, and soon to be expanding the show so that we are are getting more in touch with those of you out there that have been listening to us on a regular basis and any new listeners that are coming in uh, so that we can kind of share this journey together and, and, uh, and, and just be more in touch with the community. You know, I just skipped through one that would just put me over the edge. So I'm going to, I'll come back to it. But uh, Bruce in Oregon wrote, wow, what a show exclamation point. We used to hear about Ed Sullivan and how good his shows were, but the talent you Filippo have, uh, you and Filippo, I uh, didn't want to mean to throw you out there. <laughs> I guess this was sent to you. I don't know. But the talent you, it might have been sent to Dorothy. Um, but anyway, our producer Dorothy, the talent you and Filippo and you have, oh, they're all three of us, there you go, have been putting together is leaving his legacy in the dust. That's Ed Sullivan's legacy, I guess. Um, and I like Ed Sullivan. Please tell Filippo and everyone who puts the show together that I said to keep up the great work question mark great show um he doesn't see us working he thinks this is all play and and and, you know bruce it's getting there and and it is and we should talk about our guests coming up after this commercial break because it's going to be a really good shoe (laughs) this already is a really good shoe um that the the guest now is just going to be icing on the cake you know i have so i have to read the one that i said i was going to skip over and this is from Andrea here in California somewhere. She wrote, hello. She wrote twice. Uh, I found two of her emails. First, it said, hello. I found out about your radio program off David Wilcox website. Since I spend over eight hours a day at the computer doing graphic design, I have been obsessed with your radio archives. And that was special. And then she wrote another one. It said, Filippo, you make me laugh so hard. Three exclamation points. Your voice is absolutely amazing, and I look forward to hearing it every day at work until the archives run out, and I can only hear it every Monday. Lots of laugh. You speak your thoughts and tell your stories beautifully, and your interactions with the guests are captivating. Thank you so much. So, what can you say? Um, Oh, also, I I would like to mention that the guests you choose really hit home every time. That's probably why I'm in love with this show. The wealth of knowledge that I take in from each guest really helps speed up knowledge of myself and others. There's so much to learn. Well, Andrea, uh, you're going to learn so much from our guests today. So thank you, all of you who have been sending emails. Do keep sending them. As a matter of fact, send them, text them, uh, call us, uh, send us regular mail. Um, and, and we appreciate it, and we'll get to read some of it on the show here as, as uh, we move forward. Uh, our guest today is Jim Selman, who's the founder of Paracom Partners International. He's a recognized leader and authority in the field of organizational transformation and cultural change. He was among, and still is, among the pioneers of organizational management practitioners who identified the need for manifesting organizational change, disguised, distinguished, excuse me, the leverage point for leaders and managers to generate change and develop a technology for accelerating the pace of change. Wow, this guy's right up our alley. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, we should have him on the show. How perfect is that? Can we get him on the show? You think? Um, uh, and and he's been doing this with some of the top companies in the world, like not the top five hundred or the top one hundred, but even the top five, ten, and that kind of thing. So uh, it's exciting to me to know that that's happening out there with people like him. So we're going to be talking to him about exactly what he does how he does it and how he can help us 
create that culture of change in our very own lives. Right after this, I am Filippo Voltaggio. You're listening to Life Changes with Filippo. A healthy new you is on its way, and it starts with laminine. Laminine is a natural, synergistic superfood that contains most known vitamins, important trace minerals, all eight essential amino acids, and other nutritional elements. Laminine is nature's most perfect food and the perfect combination of life-giving sustenance sourced from land, sea, and plants. The key ingredient in laminine is a normal adaptogen called fibroplast growth factor, which helps to create a balance or normalization and aids in restoring the body to its natural state of homeostasis. Regular use of laminine has been known for reducing the signs of aging by giving you healthier skin, decreasing the effects of stress, increasing physical, mental, and emotional strength, increasing libido, and it's also been believed to elevate serotonin levels, thus improving mood, aiding in brain function, and increasing alertness and focus, all while developing an overall sense of well-being. Are you ready for the healthy new you? For more information, email trylaminineNow at gmail.com. That's Laminine, L-A-M-A-N-I-N-E. Or call 818-462-6782. That's 818-462-6782. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jumpstart, an awakening, someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. Listen to these words. He would not be beat by forces too fierce for man, woman, or beast. As the going got tougher, his courage increased. It's a little story with a big message, a message that speaks to children of all ages. It's about believing in yourself, overcoming obstacles, and never giving up. It's been called a masterpiece, one of the finest children's books ever written, and a true children's classic. Shadow Stevens has been called Dr. Seuss for the 21st century. His big little book, The Big Galoot, is a story about bullying. Bullying has become an American epidemic, and The Big Galoot talks about it in a way that will touch the heart of a child of four and a grandfather of 104. It's the story of a little boy with size 42 hands, the biggest hands anyone has ever seen, and the kids laugh at him, then the laughter turns mean. They mock him and trip him, and much worse. But throughout it all, Warren Galoot says... I'm a galoot, but I have good luck. You can't get me down. I never give up. A second grader named Chandler said, I thought it was the best funny book I have seen in my life. And we agree. Whoopi Goldberg said, This is a great story. Bravo, Shadow. The Big Galoot is available now as an e-book exclusively on Kindle Fire on Amazon for only $3.98. We strongly urge you to get it for your children, your children's children, or as a gift to yourself. Its message speaks to all of us. Have good luck and never give up. Go to Amazon.com and search for The Big Galoot by Shadow Stevens. Are you achieving your highest potential? Do you know what that looks like? Louise Ashby Life Coaching makes it a mission to bring balance and abundance to every area of your life, giving you the opportunity to do and be all that you've dreamed. Anything is possible if you just believe. Contact author and motivational speaker Louise Ashby for your complimentary session and see if her individualized style is for you. You can email Louise at louiseashby.org. That's L-O-U-I-S-E-A-S-H-B-Y.org or telephone 323-592-7000. 
3181. That's Louise at louiseashby.org or telephone 323-592-3181. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS radio network with our host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows, which include luminaries such as David Wilcock, Mariel Hemingway, Giorgio Sukalos, Marcy Shymoff, and Shadow Stevens on our archive page at our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O dot com. Remember, you can also connect with us via Twitter and Facebook and now in our own community at lifechangesnetwork.com, where real people come together to share real life in real time. That's lifechangesnetwork.com. We're back. I am Filippo Voltaggio. This is Life Changes with Filippo. And our guest today, we are happy to have Jim Selman on with us. Jim, welcome to our, our kind of new show. Well, thank you, Filippo. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear that, actually. Uh, you know, as, as we're sitting here uh, pioneering our way at, at a time where this is most needed, uh, maybe people don't know how much this is needed and how perfect... Uh, that that you're on the show because when you first started doing this as a pioneer in transformational leadership, I, I bet a lot of companies didn't know they needed this, right? I think that's, I think a, that's, fair, a, fair, that's a fair that's statement. a fair statement. The uh, the main idea is that uh, most most uh, companies uh, have become successful based on uh, lots of uh, uh, formulas and and uh, ways of succeeding. And that they're now having to confront the speed and rapidity of change, so that some of, some of those old uh, formulas aren't working anymore, and that's where transformation becomes really essential to uh, to survival in the future. So, what was the path like for you personally? Did you did you know that companies had to listen to you, or or at least had to change, and you just kept saying, "I just got to do what I'm going to do. Someday they'll see it." Or did you ever stop and say? They're never going to get this. Or what am I doing right now? Well, I think I think Filippo that my uh, my personal journey has not really been one of having answers and trying to sell them to companies or to individuals for that matter. Uh, it's been more of a uh, an inquiry for about the last thirty five years. I used to be a partner in a big eight accounting firm, and uh, it really got down to the difficulty we had in just implementing anything. And you could have the best and the brightest, and you could have lots of money and budgets, and you could have people more or less agree on the problems. But when it really came into implementing those kinds of changes and coming up and putting those solutions into practice, uh, you know, something seemed to happen. So I was there uh, at the birth of a lot of people asking questions like, what's going on? And what we began to distinguish is this thing we now call organizational culture. Uh, prior to that, culture was simply something you saw in the opera house or on the ballet stage mm. uh, and in the symphony. Uh, so culture really became a way of talking about what this, is, what is this human uh, condition that we all live in where we can have all the, the right answers and the right ideas and even lots of desire, but when it really comes down to it, we don't walk the talk or we don't implement what it is we say we obviously need. You, you know, that's interesting you mentioned culture. When, uh, when I started with IBM, they talked about the culture. So obviously, um, that was probably around the same time that you're talking about because um, I, I, it wasn't that long ago for me. But I also saw that they, they said the culture was one thing, but it really was another. Are, are some companies kind of fooling themselves or or they just... Uh, pretend uh, you know are they trying what what what's happening out there with that well my my definition Filippo, of of culture is really the conversation that people have every day about the way it is around here so uh-huh. if you just, if you just listen to people in the hallway and you listen to people in the carpools uh, everybody's got a notion of what they can do and what they can't do and what's possible and what's not possible and IBM in this particular case has always had a very very strong culture and where you where you see it take a hold is when somebody tries to change something in IBM. So, for example, a part of their culture for years was wearing the the tie and the white shirt and, and the, the the conservative right. suit. Uh, and it's only been really in the last few years that they begin to loosen uh, their 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 way of doing things to where people can dress in a more uh, conventional business casual manner. 
but it's taken like almost forty years for that kind of change to take hold. Right. So, so it's it's the it's I, I've often said that the the ego is to the individual what the culture is to society, mm. uh, and and what the culture is to organization, uh, and and it it basically will do anything. It's like a mechanism that's designed to reject change and to pretty much hold on to whatever the status quo is or whatever we've become comfortable with. So when you start trying to engage people to consider something that's not normal for them or for what's something that's, quote, outside their box, uh, it's uncomfortable. And people have to be willing to challenge their assumptions and challenge their, their habits and begin to invent new ways of working and new ways of, of relating and new ways of getting along. You know, that's interesting that you should point, pinpoint the exact thing that are one of them that that kind of uh, ushered my way, my journey out of IBM was I started becoming more of this without really knowing it. And so when I first started with IBM, I was wearing uh, almost a, th- a three piece suit, actually, and then it became a two piece suit, but the white shirt always and a power tie, etc. And then as I started becoming more, more this entertainer, uh, this stuff started coming out of me. I started to dress a little bit more. I still had suits on, but they were more like green or, uh, you, you know, and, and, and I started getting, and, and my hair started growing a little bit longer and I started getting management telling me, you don't do that, you don't do that. And, and people outside the company saying, you know, that's their culture. That's, you have to listen to it. And I thought that there was room and need for change, but they didn't. So a lot of companies don't know that yet. Well, I think that's correct, and I mean, I think a lot of human beings don't know that. Uh, you know, for me, uh, trans- trans- transformation is really uh, not so much about changing the circumstances; it's about changing ourselves and our relationship to circumstances. So, the more that we can begin to see that we have choices in how we relate to virtually everything, the more freedom and power we have over our own lives as well as the more uh, uh, capacity we have as leaders to bring new visions and new interpretations and new ideas into reality. Uh, but the key, the key, in my view, is really appreciating that we have choices. Uh, so many people today are suffering in organizational life because they don't think they have a choice. Uh, they're, they're, they're living in a kind of I have to because or they're afraid to take a risk because – and one way or another, they, they end up locking themselves into a kind of uh, uh, going through the motions way of, of working, uh, which really kills their, their creativity and joy and, and capacity for satisfaction and happiness. And you see it most often when you contrast the way people talk about their life at work and the way they talk about the rest of their life. Uh, it's like I'm two people. I turn myself on when I, when I go home mm-hmm. and I turn myself off when I go to work. Or I get into certain behaviors and patterns that I think I have to follow rather than simply express myself. Wow. I'm really glad you said that. And I like how it applies to to e- each of us individually. First of all, there's no such thing as two people. It's us. And so there's there's leakage there somewhere. And it's either leaking into the workforce or leaking into our life. And and we either know it or don't know it. But when we come back after this break, I, I, I want to talk about uh, how um, how it applies to us personally. Because just like you said about the companies, people saying, "Well, that's the culture. That's the way things are here," or "That's just the way it is." Well, people say that about each other. Well, that's just the way she is. And 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 sometimes I wonder if that person even knows that that's how we see that person. And if they knew, they might choose to change uh, and we might be able to uh, help usher that in. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that uh, as it also applies to management in our companies and things like that when we come back after this. You're listening to Filippo on Life Changes with Filippo and we'll be back with Jim Selman right after these messages. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb and rob minerals from the body. Ionways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. 
Water from an Ionways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. And ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. Hi, I'm Ken Sheets with buzzbros.com, socially conscious social media. Really happy to be here on Life Changes with Filippo talking to you. Filippo was one of our first clients, and we built his YouTube station, his Twitter Twitter stuff. We do all kinds of good stuff. But YouTube is really where we shine. We've got over 6 million views for our clients there. Anyway, give us a look up at uh, buzzbros.com. That's B-U-Z-Z-B-R-O-Z.com. Thanks. A healthy new you is on its way, and it starts with Laminine. Laminine is a natural, synergistic superfood that contains most known vitamins, important trace minerals, all eight essential amino acids, and other nutritional elements. Laminine is nature's most perfect food and the perfect combination of life-giving sustenance sourced from land, sea, and plants. The key ingredient in Laminine is a normal adaptogen called fibroplast growth factor, which helps to create a balance or normalization and aids in restoring the body to its natural state of homeostasis. Regular use of Laminine has been known for reducing the signs of aging by giving you healthier skin, decreasing the effects of stress, increasing physical, mental, and emotional strength, increasing libido, and it's also been believed to elevate serotonin levels, thus improving mood aiding in brain function, and increasing alertness and focus, all while developing an overall sense of well-being. Are you ready for the healthy new you? For more information, email trylaminine.now at gmail.com. That's laminine, L-A-M-A-N-I-N-E. Or call 818-462-6782. That's 818-462-6782. Are you achieving your highest potential? Do you know what that looks like? Louise Ashby Life Coaching makes it a mission to bring balance and abundance to every area of your life, giving you the opportunity to do and be all that you've dreamed. Anything is possible if you just believe. Contact author and motivational speaker Louise Ashby for your complimentary session and see if her individualized style is for you. You can email Louise at louiseashby.org. That's L O U I S E. A-S-H-B-Y dot org or telephone 323-592-3181. That's Louise at louiseashby.org or telephone 323-592-3181. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our representation page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. This is Life Changes with Filippo, and our guest today is Jim Selman, the founder of Paracom Partners International, and he's a recognized leader and authority in the field of organizational transformation and cultural change. If you want to learn more about Jim, you can go to www.paracom.com, and that's P as in Paul, A-R-A-C-O-M-M, like Mary, dot com, P-R-A-C-O-M-M. 
Excuse me, P-A-R-A-C-O-M-M dot com. Uh, Jim, uh, just before we went to break, I asked you how some of this uh, applies to us. We say about people all the time, oh, yeah, that's just the way she is, or that's just the way uh, he is, uh, or that's just the way I am. And yet you have helped big corporations change the way they are. How does this apply to us as individuals? Well, uh, Filippo, first of all, I say that organizations are a bit of a myth. Uh, they're an abstraction, and that really organizations are just made up of individual people like you and me. Mm. Uh, I typically start my work by asking people to consider that there's there's three fundamental questions that all of us probably need to answer, uh, whether we're in an organization or whether we're uh, taking care of the house. Uh, and those questions are, one, who am I? Uh, the second question is, what would I accomplish if I weren't limited by what I think limits me? Wow. And the third question is what's missing to accomplish that. Uh, In my view, transformational leadership is about creating the future. It's not about solving problems. And uh, where where this connects to ordinary people, and all of us are ordinary people in one sense, is that, that we begin to ask ourselves, what is it that I'm really committed to in my life? And if I am committed to that, then what's missing for me to fulfill those commitments? Uh, Too often people commit to what they think is reasonable or feasible or realistic without considering that possibilities by definition aren't realistic. If they were realistic you could and you could prove a possibility, it would be an example. So I'm I mostly am challenging people in corporations to take individual responsibility for their company and for their company's vision and for their, their lives and their work and their relationship with other people at work. Uh, the net result of that is when people are free to act as opposed to react and to express themselves fully, uh, the corporation benefits in terms of results and, uh, and uh, creativity and, most importantly, lately, innovation. Wow. You know, <laughs> I'm listening to your, to your uh, three questions that you ask people. I can't imagine very many people being able to answer that for themselves, to answer that for a whole corporation made up of people who can't answer that for themselves that's quite a task well i find i find that most people surprisingly can answer those questions when they really begin to see that they have a choice about the answer uh one of the big mistakes i think in how we historically have viewed people and viewed ourselves is that in in the whole field of management basically is by objectifying human beings uh relating to people as if they're objects and then mm. trying to to try to understand the object and what makes it tick and then try to motivate and control the object to do what you think you want it to do. Uh, In a transformational paradigm or in a transformational way of looking at the world, what you're selling people is, A, you're not an object, B, you have a choice, and thirdly, that to to create the future, you have to be willing to make unreasonable commitments. Uh, You know, there's a George Bernard Shaw, I think, once said, reasonable people adapt themselves to the circumstances unreasonable people adapt the circumstances to themselves mm. and progress and you could add freedom and a lot of other things uh, are a function of being unreasonable <laughs> unreasonable uh, I, I, that's a great word and it's making me think of our current situation at the moment uh, the, the people that we're working with uh, to help us work through this new clock and new format and all that, it's interesting some of their language as they've obviously worked with other people uh, in this, and they've said, "We know you're going to hate it. We know you're going to have trouble with it. We know you're going to stumble. We know, we know." And 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 I kept saying, "Oh, I'm excited. Oh, this is fun. Oh, I'm looking forward to it." And they're saying, "Well, we know you're not going to you, you're going to complain." And I'm like, "I'm not complaining. I'm I'm enjoying this. This is good. Keep going." And so obviously, we have gone through a certain process in order to be able to understand people like you. And what you bring to the table? How do we help others get that? Well, I think I think first of all, obviously, you're pros, and in that sense, you're kind of uh, open to the kind of changes that your uh, your advisors are, are suggesting to you. Uh, I, I find that the first question about who are you could be, be easily looked at as as thinking about things, and our way of being in the world day to day is more of a habit than not. And when you're trying to change yourself or reinvent yourself or reinvent your format, in your case, uh, what you're really doing is, is learning or inventing a new habit. 
And when that habit becomes as natural as your old format, it'll be like you can't even remember the way it used to be. Mm. And in, in the sense of creating anything original and new, it's, it's very much like creating something uh, uh, as an expression of your vision and your commitment as distinct from trying to change or fix something. So rather than trying to, tr- to fix your old format, you're creating a whole new format. And the more you look at it that way and the less you resist your old habits, uh, the more naturally that's going to be implemented. And pretty soon it will become as normal as the old habit used to be. But the, f- the four relationships that I tend to focus on most, most uh, specifically is I suggest to people that mastery or who you are and mastering yourself really involves the relationship you have with yourself the relationship you have with other people, the relationship you have with your circumstances, and the relationship you have with time. And that your choice is fundamentally you're either acting or reacting. You're either exercising commitment and choice or you're more or less operating automatically. And that when you've reached a point where most of the time you're the actor and you're generating your commitments as distinct from reacting, the more naturally you find life kind of flows with you. Uh, the bottom line is I often ask my clients, I say, do your commitments determine your reality or does your view of reality determine what you commit to? And that's mm-hmm. what I mean by, by at the bottom line is kind of choice. Wow. You know, uh, Jim, I gave one of your websites out uh, earlier, but I know you have several others. Which ones would you like to mention in the minute and a half that we have left and, and make sure that people know how to get a hold of you and, and your services? Well, what we haven't talked about is my passion. My private passion is trying to transform the paradigm of aging so that the end of life has as much possibility as the beginning. And I have a website called uh, Serene Ambition, www.sereneambition, that's one word, dot com. And I have another site called eldering.org. And both of those sites are sort of at the, at the, at the beginning of trying to, to create awareness that aging is also a choice and how we relate to ourselves as we age, how we relate to others as we age, can make growing older something to look forward to rather than to put off as long as possible. Wow, I didn't know about this. This sounds like a whole show in itself. This is exciting. Tell us a little bit more about this because this is so important. Well, I mean, most people get older in a, in a kind of paradigm of I, I, I live to a point, I reach my prime, and then I decline. Right. And, and what I'm suggesting to people is that's an interpretation. Our society basically treats age like it's an individual illness uh, or condition, as opposed to maybe we have a whole bunch of sick fish in a polluted pond, and that we need to shift the culture of aging. We need to shift the context in which we get older and begin to take responsibility that we have a choice about our experience as we age. So rather than making jokes about uh, uh, times you go to the bathroom or your memory and, 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 and try to laugh it off or why to, to, to hold on to youth, uh, we need to see that we do have those choices. More importantly, I think we need to build new kinds of bridges that haven't existed. Uh, between generations. Uh, in the past, I could nice. more or less live in the same world as my father. Today, the gap between my world and my son's world is huge. And we need to learn from each other and co-create the future together. Very nice. Very nice. Please give us those websites again. Uh, Serenity Ambition, is it? No, it's Serene. Serene Ambition. Sereneambition.com and, and elder, eldering.org. E-L-D-E-R uh, I-N-G org eldering.org i like that i'm gonna have to look those up myself uh and uh we're gonna have to talk about that again another time uh thank you jim uh for being on our show and for being so great with our new format (laughs) well thanks to you and your listeners for uh for having me and thanks for helping us transform as we transform together thank you for what you're doing out there uh look forward to connecting again soon thank you We'll be back with our producer's wrap. This is Filippo Voltaggio with Life Changes with Filippo, and we'll be back right after this. Listen to these words. He would not be beat by forces too fierce for man, woman, or beast. As the going got tougher, his courage increased. It's a little story with a big message, a message that speaks to children of all ages. It's about believing in yourself, overcoming obstacles, and never giving up. It's been called a masterpiece, one of the finest children's books ever written, and a true children's classic. Shadow Stevens has been called Dr. Seuss for the 21st century. His big little book, The Big Galoot, 
is a story about bullying. Bullying has become an American epidemic, and the big galoot talks about it in a way that will touch the heart of a child of four and a grandfather of 104. It's the story of a little boy with size 42 hands, the biggest hands anyone has ever seen, and the kids laugh at him, then the laughter turns mean. They mock him and trip him, and much worse. But throughout it all, Warren Galoot says, I'm a galoot, but I have good luck. You can't get me down. I never give up. A second grader named Chandler said, I thought it was the best funny book I have seen in my life. And we agree. Whoopi Goldberg said, This is a great story. Bravo, Shadow. The Big Galoot is available now as an ebook exclusively on Kindle Fire on Amazon for only $3.98. We strongly urge you to get it for your children, your children's children, or as a gift to yourself. Its message speaks to all of us. Have good luck and never give up. Go to Amazon.com and search for The Big Galoot by Shadow Stevens. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jumpstart, an awakening. Someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our representation page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. We're back. I am Filippo. This is our producer's wrap with uh, Filippo and Marc Lejour uh, after a great interview with Jim Selman. You know, the change, right? This is what the show's about. And, and here's, here's a, an expert you know, that's bringing this to, to corporations and individuals. And, but but what, what I, kept, I kept hearing while I was listening to, to him speak was the fact that I, it always amazes me that we are designed such that in our ego that we stand in our power when it comes to something we believe or some or a habit that we make but yet everything is new it's new it's it's everything's weird until it's learned mm-hmm. and then it's familiar mm-hmm. right so the whole idea of change is just relearning something new but yet we resist it we resist in our jobs we resist in our relationships mm-hmm. it, it's hard to get somebody to drive a, a, an alternate route to a destination that they're used to going to every day. Mm, yeah. Have you tried that? No, let's go this way. No, no, we always, this is always the fastest. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you can't be right there. We always, you know, there's always some sort of resistance to, to that type of change. And I think that you, know, you see that in other aspects of life. But yet, again, when you step back and you think about as you're growing up, as you're a child, you're just learning these things for the first time. Mm. Those become the, you know, the base code for the, your programming. And until you accept new code, you know, and relearn that, or be willing to relearn it, because change is really about the willingness to take a look at, at, at 
something from a different perspective. You know, I look at back at at, at some of uh, some of our parents, and I think you know there, there are so many things that they didn't know, not because they were stupid, but because some of the things weren't out there back then or or even better yet they didn't have the time uh to do to do some of the the things that we we do like uh you know self help stuff or some uh personal uh, development there wasn't the internet at least for some of us growing up so so the way we learned thing to your point mark the way we learned certain things is is was based on that knowledge well look at the basics right there was a would be a, a one room schoolhouse well, now we right. have campuses and universities, right. and you know, so there's a myriad of experiences and, and communications and the amount of information that flows. People are changing by the moment because they learn something new, or they see something new, or when it comes to buying something, they you know they they get you know a, a new desire because they you know there's got to be new shoes and a nice new phone or some sort of material aspect because they're we're being fed with so much information and so much experience which you didn't have back there living on the prairie in the log cabin. <laughs> now I never lived on a prairie in a log cabin, although it does sound like fun. Um, I, you know, the, the phone thing is interesting because here I am. I had a, a nice phone for the longest time, and it was a phone that was state of the art at the time that I bought it. But it was four years old, <gasps> four years old, and already the technology had changed so much that when I got my new smartphone. Uh, there were things on it that I didn't know how to use. So I was asking the person, like, how do you do this? How do you do this? And so I was learning all this stuff. Well, my niece, who was six at the time, saw that I had a new phone, and she's like, oh, let me see it. And within seconds, she was taking pictures with it and taking movies and doing all this stuff. She didn't need anybody explaining anything, and she doesn't have one of these. But their mind thinks differently. So how arrogant would it be of me to say, I know everything? I'm going to teach you. Well, similarly, right? My my son, who's now four and a half, it just seems like a couple of months ago, he had one of those little Disney cameras or Mickey Mouse cameras or whatever where you take a picture, but it's actually a picture of, of something from one of the movies. Oh, funny. And, and recently... He, See, I didn't know they had that. I want one. He, he, I'll bring you his, actually, because <laughs> he's he not want. using it because <laughs> we had the first iPhone that we didn't use anymore that was sitting around collecting dust because we got new phones eventually. And so it's disconnected. You know, it's not working for, as far as as a phone goes, but it functions like an iPad Touch. Right. So it has applications. We can put music on it, everything else. And next thing I know, I'm turning around and he's going, "Daddy, cheese!" And he's taking pictures with the real camera. And I had forgotten. Of course, it has those applications. And you and didn't so teach him he that. Is. He learned it all on his own. He's taking pictures like a real photographer. And there's no Mickey Mouse or or right. Go- well, there's Goofy, because, but that's you. Yeah. Right. But other than that, you know, there, it's a real camera, and, and he. Is four and a half, and and you know, um, so how early are, are kids learning things, being exposed to information, and, and growing up, and, and those are the, the the good and the bad of this information age that we have to, you know, work with as we're as we're you know trying to teach them and allowing them to teach us. Well, listen, I've learned so much just in this year alone, much less the 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 several the three years or so that we've been doing this, uh, and and I, I think to myself, had I had kids three years ago or. Four years ago, I would have taught them a certain way. I just know it. Or better yet, had I had kids before the show, I would have taught them a certain way. But now I would teach them completely different. But what about the kids that grew up back then with parents like me or parents, better yet, with parents that have a nine to five job that don't have time to to read up about all the Jim Selmans in the world and all of what they're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, this is an interesting thing because of, of this, the information age and how busy and how fast everything is. There, I, I think even more, I'm noticing how careful you have to be. More importantly, how present you have to be because there's so much. If you take your eye off of your child for a period of time, there's no telling what he can get into. Mm. You know, I, I get frustrated with conventional television. We try to leave it off now because, of course, you know, you could be in the middle of a kid, children's show, but then they're advertising, you know, things are blowing up and people are getting killed because mm. they're advertising a primetime network show or some mm. something like that. And yeah. the same way goes with if he, you know, gets on around a computer or, or, or maybe YouTube's on and, you know, you can touch things on an iPad now, so he's going to fool around and we had to make sure the restrictions are on and, and that, you know, we're, wow. we're monitoring because you can start getting video 
videos and and it may look like one thing which they do often to try to attract viewers sure. and then he's watching you know somebody else that has put something up that's completely inappropriate trying to get more viewership and of course he doesn't know the difference and so you got to be so careful because so much information is there in an unfiltered manner that uh, you know the kids can can get influenced by have access to I I can't imagine I look at uh, my family and friends that that have children and I and I said say God bless them and and I try and do my part as well because uh, talk about it takes a village if if there's ever a time that we need a village now is the time and technically this is a village here we are a lot of changes I mean we're we're trying to net some stuff out try and bring out the most information uh, in certain topics things that are important uh, to people and so for that reason also. Do let us know what is important to you, what you'd like to hear. Uh, you're, you're busy doing the nine to five thing or whatever it is, and, and you've got the kids and, and all that. If you want to know something from us, let us know. We'll see if we can get a guest on that very topic and bring the information that you need. So you can email us, you can go to Twitter, you can go to Facebook. Uh, you know, there's, we're easily accessible, and we'd love to hear from you and, and, and get more ideas and, and be able to bring more information. Indeed, follow us at Twitter at I am Filippo. F I L I P P O, just I am Filippo on Twitter. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Life Changes with Filippo. Uh, and um, you, you have our emails and everything on our website. So, by all means, we love hearing from you. And now you know. So, with that, I'm grateful for the uh, end of our first episode of the new format. I want to thank uh, everybody that made this possible, especially Dorothy Lee Donahue, our producer, Mark Lejour, and Seth Hendricks, our engineer. I am Filippo saying life changes, and we're here for you. Ciao, everyone. You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about them, visit the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes. Change the world, change the world.